Hey, it's Steve. Welcome back to Clear Direct. This is episode 11, which is primarily landing gear, which I'm super excited about, but it's also fixing some mistakes. And I wanted to talk a little bit about why I'm kind of putting myself out there as a first time builder. It's a good way to communicate and develop a community. Well, the primary reason is that community has my back. All right. So thank you guys for pointing out the mistakes that I'm making. I fail to say this as often as I should, but first time builder, this is not instructional. This is for entertainment purposes and for the guys and gals who are waiting for their S21s and just consuming all that they can on, on other people's builds and learning from it. I don't mean to teach, but I will hold myself accountable because you guys hold me accountable. Keep them coming. Ruben, thanks for catching this. Now, advisory circular 4313-2, I think chapter three talks about ELT antenna being uh, 36 inches or 0.9 meters away from other antenna, primarily VHF. Artex said, okay, got it, <clears throat> but minimally 32 inches. That distance rapidly declines with the sweep of the UHF, uh, VHF antenna to the tip. The reason why I didn't put it back here initially is accessibility. There's not an obvious way to access this, right? There's, there's nothing from underneath the belly. The first access panel's way back there. So what that means is you gotta access it through the cockpit. Bulkheads can support a board of wood. And that's gonna be my solution there. The other two things, yeah, mistakes I guess, but um, I'm not as <laughs> shockingly embarrassed, is I did replace three steel rivets here because there was a spacer that I fabricated for inside or, or extra spacers just to make the fuselage tail cone fit right. It needed a longer depth of a rivet. And then the third thing I want to fess up to, but I realized that I have to go back and torque the axle nuts down. And to do so, you need to stick a wrench in there. So I need to take off this entire wheel times two. We're going to roll the tape. Here is episode 11, landing gear and fixing mistakes. Yes, barely. All right, we got three feet. There's my desired location. While we're being transparent, found something else that you need to know about. Failed rivets. Well, I tried a different way on each of these four and none of them worked. So I am waiting for the wedge, which will help me install these. And this is a very structural member, so I'm told. Uh, so you definitely want to get this right. Some dads make soapbox derby cars. Other dads make boards to fly or to crawl into the back of airplanes. Doing a great job. Okay, we've got extra bulkhead support, say get me two by fours. Wish me luck. Don't injure yourself, don't injure the airplane. this doubler. All right, here's the final product, however it's supposed to go. Finally recovering from the stake. It is looking good, it is done. Thanks to this young man right here who's still tidying up. Yep, it's about that time. Give her some dancing shoes. washer so it breaks free from the cam to full swivel and then it re-engages got the dual caliper brakes. The Matco wheel comes already kind of assembled so you just have to unscrew the axle nut and then the axle comes out. Stands for 
they mean to add in an, an, an extra leaflet in here with the engineering drawings, um, but they didn't, so he's gonna email it to me. I'm still waiting for that email, so I'll load it up on the screen when I get it to show the engineering drawing of this. The whirring hearing is a flex shaft, jewelry being created, and that's a puppy. Oh. The tires say tube type, but I don't, I mean, we're running tubeless, so we'll see if they work. To get these out, you gotta get a hex in there, which means you gotta take the rotor off. And the rotor has a different type of fastener. Easy peasy. One thing I like about these gear legs, you can see the hydraulic line terminates there, but then is protected in this aft facing channel. The airplane is getting bigger, so we are making more room. We're gonna lop off about three feet of the table. Some stuff I bought. I don't think I needed this. This is a tire mount lubricant. Noma, Noma, Garcia Para. Noma! Noma! And then this is some uh, high temp disc brake wheel at bearing grease. You absolutely do need this. And there's an awesome video, actually, just discovered this guy. He's building, building a Zenith and he's got nice 26 inch Aero Classics. We're gonna clean the bearings, so we're gonna pack them with grease. So I got this, which fits my 3 8 drive and then also can fit any sort of driver right there and I can attach that to the torque wrench, torque anything down that's uh, kind of a rotational fastener there. We're supposed to clean off these bearings before putting in grease. They feel pretty darn clean, but I'm just gonna blast them with the brake cleaner. I guess other people do it with 100 low light or gasoline, but this is what I have on hand. So just clean these off, get some grease in them. Never done this before, so it'd be too hard on me. <laughs> Bill's doing the, uh, the lube job, if you will, of the O-ring to seal the two halves together. I'm going to start moving up the rim. This is going to take two pairs of hands. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Looks nice and warm. Put it in the sun for a while, just kind of loosen things up. There we go. Nice. Place it in. Okay. And again, the rims, you want to keep them mated as they came from the factory and they're nice enough to put a V where the valve goes. So it's clocked. All right, you want to torque these to appropriate setting, but not right now. <laughs> I want to take the time to do that. Working kind of fast because it's still a little bit warm from the sun. Tease it down. Yep, Bang. just like that. Happens all at once. Yeah. Just Getting the rest of the hardware installed for these hubs. Okay, here we go. Okay. 
thing. Oh, there we go. There we go. Nice. Thanks for your help, Bill. That was hugely helpful. Kellen was doing a bang up job. And I was looking at his cool Garmin watch, Phoenix 5. And you guys might like this story. So the Air Force or my squadron or ops group bought us these watches because the F-15 was having issues with um, decompression or insidious decompression and, and oxygen issues. And so this, this is a, a you know, a, a, a creative solution to let us know if our cabin altimeter goes above a certain value. So it would kind of um, vibrate on your wrist and you can descend, gangle of the regulator, 100% oxygen. Um, so kind of fun, fun story. And I was able to gift that to Kellen. Looks kind of badass on his wrist. Big old watch. And it's Bluetooth, so it's kind of a smart watch, too. Well, that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to get to working on the floorboard as well as the boot cow and some of the interior. So, as always, I really appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, be clear to the right.